Hello friends, welcome to Dr. Sai Physiology Academy, DOPA for short. This is the place where we make the learning of physiology easy, exciting and effective. Thank you for joining me. If you're new to this channel, you're especially welcome. And if you love the content that we share, kindly click the like button and also the subscribe button. And don't forget to turn on notifications so you don't get to miss any new content that we drop. Now let's get started. So today we're going to be dealing with the final classical endocrine gland okay mentioned five of them the pituitary gland which is the master gland then the thyroid gland parathyroid endocrine pancreas now the adrenal gland now look closely at the adrenal gland it's called adrenal because you know this is the kidney it sits on top of the kidneys i know the kidneys the renal organ okay so adrenal means on top it's also called supra renal supra renal or adrenal okay but this seems to be the more common name all right supra on top of it now it has been enlarged to show you the zones or the regions or the parts or the adrenal gland there are two major parts the adrenal cortex and the adrenal medulla i'm sure you know about that so but the adrenal cortex itself is further divided into three zones as represented by this different colors here so the red this red place here is the zona glomerulosa glomerulosa okay the zona glomerulosa is the zone that secretes mineralocorticoids let's write it here okay then the green part there is known as the zona fasciculata Okay, what does it secrete? It secretes glucocorticoids. Alright, then this black place here is the zona reticularis. The zona reticularis. And what does that secrete? It secretes sex steroids okay sex steroids or rather androgens androgens that's male sex hormones testosterone androstenedione, dione and all of that so then at the very middle which makes up just about 20 percent okay is what is now the adrenal medulla this middle point here adrenal medulla okay that part secretes what is known as catecholamines so they have very the same functions with the sympathetic nervous system it's just that this one they secrete directly into the so what we're going to be dealing with we're going to be dealing with mainly the mineralocorticoids, the glucocorticoids, this one is not so important to mention, and the catecholamines under the adrenal gland. Alright, so this part one we're going to be dealing with the mineralocorticoids of the adrenal cortex. Alright, so now as you already know, these are steroids. Okay mineralocorticoids that because they come from the cortex but they are steroids they are steroids meaning that they are synthesized from cholesterol they are all of them they are synthesized from cholesterol that's why they are steroids and of course you know about the steroids that they have their intracellular receptors they don't need to be they don't have um, the plasma membrane receptors and so on so they have intracellular receptors and they go straight into the cytoplasm and then to the nucleus to engineer protein synthesis 
which produces several proteins that now affect the physiological function so now in this lecture we're going to be dealing with the mineralocorticoids and when we talk about the mineralocorticoids from the word mineral it means they help to control the levels of important mineral ions especially sodium and secondarily potassium okay so this has to do with the control of sodium ion concentration and potassium ion concentration in the blood why do you need to control this you already know the fact that sodium is the major extracellular electrolyte okay why potassium is the major intracellular electrolyte so they need that balance and the most important atps transport um, protein of where that's common in every single cell is the sodium potassium atps you know about that without it you can't even have membrane potentials and nerves cannot even conduct electricity so important and that's why it needs to be really regulated so and you have a hormone dedicated to it so this mineral corticoids produced from the zona glomerulosa the main hormone there is called aldosterone all right let's write it here aldosterone so basically about mineral corticoids you are dealing with aldosterone so aldosterone has a nickname okay it has been nicknamed the life saving hormone and you ask yourself why is it nicknamed the life saving hormone because within three days to two weeks without aldosterone a person can die because of the very vital functions it has in the body as we shall see all right so before we go ahead i would like to just briefly talk a little about the synthesis it will help you understand how these things are regulated now like i started yeah synthesized from what cholesterol so you have here cholesterol and the next thing you have is a substrate substance known as pregnenolone pregnenolone okay and after pregnant alone the next thing you have is progesterone progesterone okay and after progesterone you have another one known as 11 deoxycorticosterone okay and after that you have another one known as corticosterone then finally you now have aldosterone you now have here aldosterone okay so look at this pathway each in all these places you have enzymes specific enzymes and from here you can have it, there's a branching that can go this other way an enzyme catalyzes it and it produces another substance like it's called 70 17 alpha hydroxy pregnenolone and so on and it goes down and produces these glucocorticoids okay so they are connected from here it can branch and produce and so on and so forth then it can also branch again then produce this androgen sex steroids all right so that is how so it just depends on the presence of specific enzymes if that specific enzyme is abundant here it will divert to that pathway and so on so the different zones have different enzymes that now produce the corticosteroids that is needed okay so in this part the enzymes here are present to produce aldosterone in the zona glomerulosa 
so one thing is very important to mention is the fact that when dealing with aldosterone you need to understand what stimulates it to be secreted and it's related to the regulation very straightforward very easy stuff so now we're going to now be dealing with the things that can stimulate the secretion of aldosterone and now the function of aldosterone is very easy we've already mentioned it regulates the levels of this and how does that relate to the stimulation we're going to be talking about that after this break right you're welcome back so quickly let's deal with how aldosterone secretion is stimulated okay it will related to the regulation then we just go straight into the functions now we talked about the fact that it's related a lot aldosterone to sodium regulation levels now you know that when the sodium is high it's called hypernitremia when it's low hyponitremia then for potassium when it's high hyperkalemia when it's low hypokalemia now one of the most potent stimulus okay for the secretion of aldosterone is the levels of these two mineral ions okay so one we have hypo hyponatremia and the opposite hyper Kalemia. you know sodium and potassium they always move in the opposite direction okay so why hyponatremia is stimulating others that hyperkalemia is also stimulating it so hyperkalemia that's higher than normal potassium levels in the ecf or in the blood so another thing that really really stimulates it is hypovolemia okay what do we mean by hypovolemia low ecf volume or plasma volume okay that's there's reduced blood volume that's hypovolemia and when there's reduced blood volume there's reduced blood pressure so hypovolemia invariably is talking about reduced blood volume and also reduced pressure blood pressure okay these things are most potent stimulus for the secretion of aldose we're going to explain it now then another one which is quite a weak stimulus for the secretion of aldosterone is ACTH adrenocorticotropic hormone from the anterior pituitary okay it can stimulate the synthesis of aldosterone but it's a weak stimulus so now let's start with this it's a very common pathway it's known as the ras the renin and geotensin aldosterone system very important for you to know that i'm sure you've already learned that in renal physiology so when there is reduced blood pressure reduced blood volume there are cells in the kidneys group of cells known as the juxtal glomerular apparatus okay they can sense that reduced blood pressure and then they begin to secrete renin so renin goes and acts on angiotensinogen okay which is a protein secreted from the liver it breaks down angiotensinogen and it becomes angiotensin 1 all right so angiotensin 1 is now converted to angiotensin 2 by an enzyme in the lungs known as 
angiotensin converting enzyme ACE angiotensin converting enzyme which converts angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2 I'm sure you know about that so angiotensin 2 is now what goes to the adrenal cortex and stimulates the secretion of aldosterone renin angiotensin aldosterone how does it do that angiotensin 2 is a hormone so it goes there it's a peptide hormone angiotensin 2 it's a peptide hormone so it has the receptors at the cell membrane okay in this zona glomerulosa those cells there it binds to the cell membrane and what does it do let's look at the cell membrane here so it uses the g protein coupled receptor mechanism to operate so it binds here and through the g protein coupled receptor mechanism it activates adenyl cyclase adenyl cyclase forms camp okay cyclic amp which now forms protein kinase a that now phosphorylates certain proteins what are those proteins those proteins are actually the enzymes that are involved in this synthesis okay so by phosphorylating those enzymes it activates the enzymes that are involved in the biosynthetic pathway that leads to the formation of aldosterone so aldosterone is now made aldosterone is secreted directly doesn't need to be pre-stored okay it just it just passes through the cell membrane and it goes where straight to the kidneys so what happens aldosterone is now in the kidneys because what stimulated it first is the low blood pressure or low sodium levels in the ecf all right so it goes to the kidneys and at the distal tubule and collecting dots what does it do it goes straight and now activates the synthesis of a channel known as inac let me write it here inac it's called epithelial sodium channel okay at the principal cells of the distal tubule and collecting dots it engineers the synthesis of this protein channel epithelial sodium channel so sodium now moves from where the tubule okay and now moves transported into the extra cellular fluid okay so first of all sodium has been filtered but because sodium levels are now low at the ecf so it wants the sodium to go back into the extracellular fluid and so it creates this channel and a lot of sodium are now reabsorbed without aldosterone these channels are not present or they are very scarce so a lot of sodium will be passed in the urine but when there is low sodium low blood pressure it happens and as sodium is being reabsorbed what happens water always goes with it so it's sodium and water reabsorption so why sodium is correcting the hyponatremia the water reabsorption is correcting what the hypovolemia you see how they have corrected themselves now what about the hyperkalemia now let me explain another thing that the aldosterone does apart from helping to engineer the secret the, the synthesis of this channel it also engineers the synthesis of this sodium potassium ATPase. so it also helps to in the making of this protein channel ATPase all right so when this one has a different mechanism this one as it's pushing sodium out also this one is also 
a channel for sodium to go out but this one uses a lot of energy it is pushing sodium into the ecf and at the same time pushing potassium into the renal tubo they are going the opposite way okay so it's causing sodium reabsorption and potassium secretion so the hyperkalemia is corrected a lot of potassium comes from the ecf and it's excreted in the urine you see how it happens so this is a very simplified way to understand how aldosterone works this one mainly through stress it is released but it's mainly in the control of the zona fasciculata which we are going to deal with next and it helps in the secretion of the hormone known as cortisol which is the glucocorticoid all right so this is aldosterone for you how it is made the functions the correct hyponatremia hyperkalemia and low blood pressure which also which results from low blood volume all right so that is what you need to know so see you in the next video